I'm a husband and a father. And I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> what would you do if there was a child right in front of you? Let it die, let it die. Aquaman 2 is not looking so good. The DC in general is not looking so good. The future of the studio just seems to be binging on to its last leg by the skin of its teeth. I don't know if the studio is actually hoping that Aquaman 2 is going to help them out, but with all the detestation against Amber Heard for her obvious and widespread villainy, the movie had already turned off a lot of people. And then we get a leak that something else is supposed to happen that ended up driving people out of the movie. Mission failed. We'll next time. <laughs> Look, I'm not against death being portrayed, but I think it depends on how it's done. When you're watching something like anime, I mean, a lot is excused because it's animated. The same goes for reading a story. Being heavily descriptive about graphic situations is also excused. Trust me, as a writer myself, I'll depict horrific scenes involving a very innocent character, including animals. However, since humans are very visual creatures, there's something uneasy about seeing a live-action portrayal of something as eerily graphic as a dog being hurt or a baby biting the dust. I think if it's off-screen, it's not that bad. Like the way they handled it in the John Wick movie, for example, that was horrible, but because because the tone of the movie was about revenge, the whole point was to make the audiences feel something. So when John Wick finally got his revenge on the evil henchmen, it felt well-deserved and provided an ultimate payoff. What's actually really hilarious about this whole DC situation is that DC comics, I think, are supposed to be very dark. I think the situation where Aquaman's baby gets killed was actually in the comic book. Aww. However, DC did this themselves because when you try to make everything lighthearted in an attempt to copy Marvel, that's now what people expect. People expect that they're gonna go to see these movies and they're gonna be able to bring their three-year-olds and seven-year-olds and have a good time with a little bit of darkness and seriousness, but some fun without having to worry about being traumatized. Or about fighting trauma with trauma. The Western audience is a lot more sensitive to that kind of stuff, so when you've been toting that kind of atmosphere for DC movies all of a sudden, and then you do a complete 180 and decide that you're gonna go back to what the original atmosphere was, people are gonna be kind of confused. And I don't even think it's the idea of the baby dying that's the problem. It's probably more so how it was executed, but you know what makes all of this hilarious? <laughs> the sequel of Aquaman is also directed by James Wan, who did the first movie. I mean, this is the guy who produced The Nun, Insidious, Megan, I Know What You Did Last Summer, Malignant, and a bunch of the freaking Saw movies. Annabelle, Lights Out, The Conjuring, I mean, bro. All you have to do is take a look at this guy's track record. The Back Rooms, More Conjuring, The Crooked Man, I mean, dude. <laughs> So I don't understand why this is so surprising. Aquaman has to be one of the most tame things he's done. Most of his stuff involves scary, hostile, violent, and graphic scenes. And so this is who they chose to do Aquaman? What do you want? go? Like, how did the recruitment go? How did he even get that role? Did the people in the studio look at Insidious and the Saw movies and say, yes, that guy. Yep. <laughs> He's the perfect person to direct a movie about a man who can talk to fish and who's super sexy. Like, in what conceivable reality would I connect these two vastly distinct elements and then decide to combine them? It's like putting strawberry jam on lobster. It's just bizarre to me, and so it doesn't really come as a shock. But I understand to the regular person, they probably have no idea who James Wan is, and so they're just going into a movie thinking it's a comic book superhero movie. And based on the way it was kind of advertised, they thought it was going to be all fun and games, and what they didn't expect to get was what looks like a scene from out of the series, The Boys. Latest superhero team, the world. Soups lose hundreds of people each year to collateral damage. I can't stop. I can't stop. Ah! Which nobody has a problem with, by the way, because they understand off rip, it's freaking graphic. That's how they advertise it, so you know exactly what you're getting. I think the problem is also the initial Aquaman movie didn't have anything remotely close to what people are describing that scene is going to be. Then again, I have to also take this with a grain of salt because there are people who are very extra sensitive nowadays, and that's coming from me, who's ultra sensitive, about dogs being killed in shows and movies, and if it just seems to come out of nowhere for the sake of shock 
shock value, and yes, I have a problem with it. If it's extremely graphic, I definitely have a problem with it. Like I said, the way they did it in John Wick was perfectly handled. It still made me cry and depressed, but they did it in such a way that was manageable for the visuals and didn't leave you traumatized like they did in Yellowstone and Midnight Mass. Midnight Mass being the worst of the two. I really walked away feeling absolutely disgusted with that show, and that is the only thing I walked away with because of how traumatic it was for me. I mean, they drew out that scene. It was almost like somebody's idea of visual torture entertainment. I was disgusted, and it actually had the opposite effect of what they were going for, because instead of focusing on the character that was responsible for what happened, it made me resent and focus on the writers and look at them in a bad light. Seriously, if you're super curious because I'm talking about it, you have been warned. If you're somebody who loves dogs and don't like seeing that shit play out graphically in front of you, visually, audibly, stay clear of it. Who hurt you? Writing is a completely different medium than TV and movie entertainment. Trust me, I have a vivid imagination, so I can still see things like that happening in my head if they're described. However, people have the ability to compartmentalize, so when you're describing a story to someone about how someone got hurt or met their demise, for example, if you're listening to a story that, like, say, for example, Mr. Ballin is telling about a very real thing that happened, it's a lot more acceptable than if you were to just see it actually playing out in front of you. And after he ambushed her, he forced her into her own trunk, he bound her hands and then began savagely beating her best to get out of the trunk but eventually frederick had taken the actual metal of the trunk and began slamming it down on cheryl's face i could listen to mr ballin talking about someone having the skin melt off their body in slow motion while they're screaming in agony and i can imagine every bit of it happening general audience absolutely loves him and can definitely sit down and listen to those stories for hours on end but seeing it in a movie play out so that your eyes are the first thing to process what's happening it's a completely different situation I don't know, maybe it's because you have more control when you're actually consuming it auditorially. I don't know. I'm pretty sure there's some psychology behind it. I think a lot of people end up seeing the movie just because they're curious, but whether the baby situation was in there or not, I don't really think it would have been enough to save the movie. Especially when you consider Amber Heard's name is still attached to it, regardless of them trying to hide her from the trailers. But then it begs the question, is it ever okay to be graphic in nature when displaying a character being victimized that's innocent? And the one thing that people don't touch in the West when it comes to that kind of portrayal are dogs and babies. Wheel of Time is a show that I did a review on and I experienced something similar but the way they did it it still made me sad and cry. It was a much better execution than if we were to just actually see the entire thing play out bit by bit. If you want to you can check out my first half of the initial review of the season two of that show. The whole world will be ours. Anyway, what do you guys think? What do you think would have been so bad for people to have walked out of Aquaman 2 The Lost Kingdom? He's different now. He's stronger than before. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer.